There's a lot of reasons I think that the Democrats, uh, Congressmen, uh, think about taxes, and it's not just even to pay for things. Sometimes it's about what they view as fairness and, and what probably critics would say is just pure income redistribution. Well, I want to make it clear that uh, I'm not going to support any change in the tax code whatsoever, and Mick will be happy to hear this, unless there's a restoration of the SALT deduction. So let me just get that out there as a first step. That's a chit that I've laid on the table. Uh, we need to hear the president's budget coming out next Thursday. We need to hear his infrastructure plan coming out next Wednesday. Mick will tell you, as the former budget director for President Trump, that you really don't know which way things are going to go until you hear what the president lays out as his plan. Uh, and then we're going to respond to that. Uh, I think that there is a lot of consensus around 25 percent. Uh, you heard that uh, from the former chair of the uh, uh, Ways and Means Committee when he was advocating for it, a guy named Dick Camp. He was fighting for 25 percent. Obama's at 28 uh, percent. And the Trump administration went down to 21 percent. Nobody really saw that coming. Uh, and it didn't really make any sense. Uh, so we need to see what the president has to say. The bottom line is, is that there's good borrowing and there's bad borrowing. Good borrowing is borrowing for long-term capital improvements. That's what the classic definition of infrastructure is. I'm a, I'm a former CPA. When you borrow for some money, borrow money to pay for a road that's going to last for 40 years or a bridge or a sewer or a water distribution system or even broadband or schools or hospitals that people are talking about, that's good borrowing. That makes sense to pay for that over a long period of time. Interest rates, historically the lowest they've ever been. Jay Powell has come out and said that he's going to keep interest rates down hey, Congressman, uh, for the foreseeable future. I'm sorry to, uh, sorry to interrupt. I just got to go back to the SALT uh, thing for a second. I just, on the one hand, when Democrats talk about fairness, they, 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 they have a totally different notion, I think, of what fairness is than maybe other people. On, in other words, pay your fair share. Huh. And someone can be paying 60% in that. If they have a lot, that's Joe, still not enough because it's not the fair. You, but the salt, you're, you're, all you're doing is helping the top 10%. How, you're a CPA. How much of the salt, if you repeal that, how much of that accrues to people that are in the top 10%? 95% of, of it accrues back to... But a very what? high percentage, that's true. But it is Why about fairness. Why do you want fairness. to do that? You, you define fairness as rich versus poor. I don't define it that way. It's not fair that you pay taxes on taxes you've already paid. It's not fair that the first deduction in the history of the United States of America was the SALT deduction, the state and local tax deduction. It was in place for 100 years, and it was yanked away from states like mine, uh, causing people to leave my state. Uh, yeah. as well. Well, you're with the you're an outlier in your party, fair. then, uh, Congressman. Mm -hmm. You're an outlier if you don't define fair the way that I define it, right, Mick? That's how I always hear about fair. It's it, not it, just rich versus poor. It's about just basic fairness as to how the system works. You know, we've created enormous wealth in the United States of America over the past 40 years. The Dow Jones has gone up 1,500 percent, 15 times. That's a good thing. But that money has not been shared with the workers. The GDP has gone up 800 percent in well, the same period. Well, getting rid of the rate. salt's not going to help that. It's going to make it the worse. Go to work that, that'll day that'll well. make it worse, Tom. Uh, uh, that's, that'll make income inequality worse, what you want to do. And I understand you're representing your constituents no, that, that would benefit no, from it. Progressive states like mine can't afford to lose the high income, the moderate income people that are leaving our state, okay. leaving lower income and moderate income people behind to hold, to hold the bag. It can't and be then, that what we're and old roads and old bridges and old sewers and old this and old that, we're subsidizing yep. South Carolina and North Carolina and Florida and Arizona and other states that are building new roads and new bridges and new sewers okay. and new houses. Hey, hey, Mick, you're yeah. Republicans are just as bad because they this would help all their constituents. Get, and they don't want to do it because they don't want to they don't want to help these okay. profligate blue states that have spent too much money or something, I guess. Is, is that was actually, you, I was actually what trying really hard, Joe, to, to agree with Tom, because I like Tom. Tom, he's, he's, he's uh, good. From everybody uh, I've talked to is a great Democrat to work with. Um, you asked a, a question. He answered it and I didn't, which is what 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 kind of borrowing can you justify? And he's actually right. We we used to say when I ran the Office of Management Budget, the, the best kind of spending, and I'm doing that because it's not really spending, is letting people keep their own money because that's the most efficient. The next best kind of spending would be on infrastructure, because at least you get a return on that. And the worst kind, the most inefficient, is the wealth redistribution. So if, if, if Tom is making the point that you should borrow money at low interest rates for long-term capital improvements, I can, I can agree with that. He lost me when he talked about North, uh, New York subsidizing South Carolina, because states don't pay taxes and states don't get taxes. People 
pay taxes and people receive government benefits. And the rich people in New York do pay taxes, and that money flows to poor people in other states. That's the way the Democrats wanted it. They're the ones that are just having to deal with it now. But anyway, but the, the SALT deduction is, 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 is going to probably be changed. I think everybody can agree on that now that the Democrats are in charge. It will be interesting to see how they couch that, because it does benefit uh, the richest Americans. Um, and how they mend it uh, or they meld it in with a tax increase on corporations. But let's be one perfectly clear, because I've heard this a lot, is that people talk about reforming SALT in order to reform taxes, in order to raise money. Changing the SALT deduction now, giving the deduction back to the highest earners is going to take money out of the Treasury and add to the deficit. Let's just be clear about that. That's fine if that's what you want to do, but you can't get around it by saying, well, we're going to raise money by going back to the way that SALT was. That's just not how the math works. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.